Welcome back to my programming series. Uh, I'm going to continue talking about the different programming paradigms and in this video I'm going to talk about procedural programming. Uh, procedural programming differs from object-oriented programming in that we keep our behavior and our se uh, state separate from each other. Procedural programming also is where we essentially just use functions to modify the state of our program. So it's also quite different from functional programming. The example I put together here is a tokenizer. So uh, what it will do is read in a file, break it up into pieces, into tokens, and print them out. So what we'll do is, is we'll take a look at the test file I put together. So this is just some a test file of strings, words, numbers that I, that I want to uh, break up into pieces. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at our tokenizer function. I put it all into a header. And you'll notice I put a note up here that, uh, that our main function that requires this header needs to require string, fstream, and uh, vector before this header file. Um, and the reason for that is I, I just didn't want to put those other headers inside this file because if you end up having lots of files in your program, it gets kind of difficult to track what all you've done. So this, this requires you to kind of make your uh, order, and include your stuff in order, but then you don't have to worry about including stuff over and over again. Uh, so this one is just an example of a simple uh, procedural program. So all of, our, all of our state and functionality are separate from each other. And uh, the way that this uh, tokenizer works is it's a finite state machine. So you can see what I've done is I've enumerated some states uh, to start with here. So I've got start, identifier, string, number, special, and stop. And then for our uh, data structures, we're going to have a type. So I've enumerated some types. So just a few different types of identifier, string, number, and special. And then our major data structure that we have for this program is the token, which will contain a type. Uh, the line it was found on, the position on the line it was found, as well as the token string value itself. And then I've got a little constructor here for creating tokens. And what we've got next is uh, the, essentially the state of our program. So we keep track of, of what line we're on, the previous line, uh, position, previous position, the current character, and previous character. Uh, now we have, oops. Let's see, let's undo that a little bit. And now we've got a next character function, which will just take in a file stream. And it just gets the next character and does some other logic for lines to keep track of things for us really easily. So we don't have to do it over and over in the program. The next couple of functions aren't very uh, important. They're just there to check for check if something is a special character or is an ident a special identifier character that we want to want to be part of our identifiers. Uh, the next function is uh, a little bit more important. So it appends tokens. So the result that this program is going to uh, put out is a vector of these tokens. So what this function does is it checks if the the string that we're giving in is, is greater than zero, if its length is greater than zero, and if it is, then we just create a new token and push it back onto this token list. And, and then we just do some housekeeping for our, for our line numbers and position numbers. Then the, the main bread and butter of this program is the tokenize function, which will return a vector of tokens. And all we do is we feed in a file name uh, the, uh, that we can read from. So we just create some of our, our data to start with. So we've got our tokens, we've got a temporary string, and what this temporary string is used for is it will be the string of our token that we're building up one character at a time. And then since this is a finite state machine, we'll, have, we'll keep track of our state, um, and we'll start in the start state, and we'll also open our file. And then uh, to initialize everything, we'll just get our next character from a file. And then everything else is in a big while loop. And the while loop, um, so while we're, we're not stopped, we switch on the state. 
And so if we're in the start state, essentially everything that we do in the start state is just figure out what the next state should be. So whether we need to stop, whether we need to go to the string state or the identifier state or the number state. So there's just logic here to figure out what state we should be on uh, based on the character that we're at. And uh, one of the other things that the start state does is it also takes care of, um, of spaces. So if, if we find a space, we just want to ignore it, so we just go to the next character. Um, and I guess another way, another thing to look at is uh, how do we figure out, you know, what next state we should go, at, uh, go on to. Uh, this is a good example where if we find, uh, if we're in the start state and we see a double quote, then what we want to do is um, move on, but put that character on our temporary uh, string and then uh, move to the string state. And so then it will take care of the string state will take care of reading the rest of that string. So let's move on down and take a look at some of these. The, the uh, logic behind each of these states, the rest of these states, is very much the same, nearly identical. So we normally we want to check if we're at the end of file. And if we are, we, uh, we append any tokens if we have any left, and then we go to the stop state. Uh, if usually if we for some there's some other condition like a stop condition so for identifiers we know we want to stop adding characters to our temporary string if we reach a space so if we have a new line or a tab or, or a space then what we'll do is we'll stop we'll append the token that we've built up so far we'll get the next character and then we'll go back to start state um, otherwise um, we'll just keep building up, uh, keep adding characters to our, our string and we'll just keep going around this loop and we'll continue in the identifier state. The, uh, the rest of these states are very much like the identifier one. So even though the string looks kind of different, it has the same structure. So we check if there's an end of file and we deal with that. Uh, we check for, uh, the string has a little bit extra code here because we, we have uh, escape values. So. Uh, if there's an escape value, we, we deal with some of that stuff here. But then the rest of it is very much like the identifier code. So we, we have a stop state or where we know that we've, we're done with our identifier. And then for strings, we know that we're done if we find a, an ending uh, double quote. And then otherwise, we just keep building up our string that we're building. And the same thing for numbers. Numbers looks very close to what string does. Uh, we check for into file. If we, if we do, there's a stop. The stop condition for a number is if there's a, if we encounter a space, um, any kind of white space, and uh, otherwise we just keep building up our number. And at the end, we close the file and return all the tokens that we've that we've created. So that's that's pretty much it for the structure of the program. Let's take a look at the main program. In this program, here's all the uh, the, the include files that, that I was talking about earlier, and we included them before our tokenizer header file. Then I just have a couple functions here which help to print out our tokens. So I have a function that prints a token, and it just goes through and it goes through the structure and prints it out on a line. And then this print tokens uh, function just goes through a loop and calls print token for each token in our vector. Uh, the main function is very simple, so we just call tokenize on a file that we want, and we get a vector of tokens back. And then we just print the tokens out. And that's it, and that's how we get our result. So let's take a look at that. Let's do. Uh, standard equals C, let's see, C++ 14, and we'll do main. And if we run it, it breaks up our file, it reads our file, and breaks all the, uh, the strings up into different tokens. And it, and it keeps track of what line, or what type uh, the token is, what line it was on, what position it was at, and the actual token value itself. So this is uh, this is pretty neat. It's kind of a uh, one of the precursors to say writing an interpreter or a compiler. 
Um, so that's that's all I have to uh, say for today. That was just our example of imperative programming. Thanks for watching, people. Till next time.